I've just had a question by email from Jean who says, I'm a member of a walking club and one of the guys who normally does the navigating said that when you're following a compass bearing, you're doing the same as airline pilots and sailors, as you're following part of a great circle. And if you stop before you get where you're going to, this is called a small circle. I really don't understand this and he didn't want to give any more information. Can you explain? Well, Gene, <laughs> what can I say? I really do, I always try and be positive in my videos, but in this case, let's just say this would be slightly difficult. Don't forget, Gene, that if you can't explain something simply, it's normally because you just don't understand it. And so, <laughs> you've asked for an explanation, so let's talk about what is a great circle and what is a small circle. And as this is a, a highly technical subject, I'll need some highly technical equipment to demonstrate. Um, what can I use? This will do. <laughs> this will do. And behind me, I've got some mud. <laughs> I'll, I will get some more complicated equipment one day, you know, so I can be a real YouTuber. But uh, <laughs> I've just got some mud and a stick. <laughs> so first, what we'll do is we'll draw a map on our on our mud. So let's imagine this is a map of our area. Oh, don't forget, there's always something interesting within a short distance from where you are, always. I'll give you an example. <laughs> this mud is really interesting. Well, it is to me anyway. <laughs> I doubt it is to most people. I told you, there really is always something interesting around you, wherever you are even if it just looks like mud. Now, what was I saying? Oh yes, <laughs> let's get back to great and small circles. <laughs> Sorry about all that waffle. It's getting really cold here, I'll put my hat on. So let's imagine this is our map of this area and I want to go a few hundred meters over there. So we'll put our, these sticks in. This is our destination and start point. And we can draw a line between our, these points on our mud map set our compass, adjust for declination, and then off we go. Now, as long as we stay on this line, or the compass bearing, this will be the shortest distance between these two points. And this is fine, as long as we're not going too far. But what would happen if this line was a few hundred miles, or even a few thousand miles from start to finish? Then we would need to take into consideration the curvature of the Earth. I'm trying to work out how to explain this. I really should start writing all this down instead of just making it up as I go along. I'll give it a go. Gene, you can think about it like this. Imagine our map is just a two-dimensional drawing on a piece of paper or a pile of mud of part of the Earth. And the Earth is almost a round globe or shaped like an orange. If you imagine peeling an orange and then laying the peel flat, it won't work. The only way that you can get the shape of the skin of an orange onto a piece of paper is to shrink certain areas and stretch other areas. And this way, you'll be able to project a map of the surface of the orange onto a piece of paper. And this is what happens with maps of the Earth. The most common projection is called the Mercator projection. Um, but that's a different video. But I, I always say, you need to keep things really simple. So when I get home, I'll, I'll put a very famous map on the screen, which hopefully you'll be able to see now. This is just Google Maps. This isn't actually what the world looks like. Don't forget that it's a projection that's been, it's been stretched in some places and shrunken in other places. I'll give you an example. Looking at this map of the world, which would you say was a longer distance, from west to east of Africa or from the west to east of Russia? Now, on the map, that looks like a simple question. Obviously, Russia is much bigger than Africa on the map. But let's look at the real distances. And as you can see, this map of this round Earth has been stretched and shrunken and bent to get it to look flat. And this is even more obvious the further north and south you go. 
I'll give you another example. Look at Greenland and the USA. They're both approximately 1,600 miles from top to bottom. But look at the difference on the map. Now, anyway, back to the question, what is a great circle? So we've seen that to go a long distance from one point to another on the Earth, we need to deal with the curvature of the Earth. And we also need to go in a different direction over, a, over different distances to what's shown on a paper map. So again, using our highly technical mud, I'll, I'll tell you what, let me just go and get some mud. Hang on. We can eat. Right. I've, I've come inside to do the rest of this video as a few minutes after that last shot up in the hills, the comedy rain started. And in that situation, there's nothing you can do. Oh, if you're not used to walking in the hills in England, you may not have heard the expression comedy rain. Sometimes when you're outside, there's nowhere to shelter because you're at the, you know, on the top of a hill and the rain is coming down so hard and so heavy. The only thing you can do is laugh. <laughs> it, it won't keep you dry, but it'll stop you feeling sad. That's why it's called comedy rain, because it makes you laugh. Anyway, as I said, <laughs> when you're navigating over long distances, you need to take into consideration the shape of the earth and which is, it's, it's almost the same shape as an orange. Not quite, but near enough. And this means that most of the time you'll need to go in a different direction and over different distances than what's shown on your map. When I was up in the uh, hills filming this, I actually did make a globe out of some mud, but I don't have any mud in the office, so I'll have to use these. So the, these oranges, the, these are approximately the same shape as the world. So let's say that I want to go from here to approximately here. It makes no difference. So all I do is I draw a line between them. That's our line. Now, if we all used globes, then, then all we'd do is we would orientate our globe from here and we would walk in that direction. And it'd be really, really simple. But we don't use globes, we actually use maps. So what we'll do is, I'm going to take the skin off this map, <laughs> skin off this globe, and, and let's see what happens to our line. You have to bear with me for this one. So here's our orange peel. Um, I'm not used to, it did take a while that, I'm not used to peeling oranges like this, but there you go. Now, obviously, if I wanted to make this into a real map of the surface of the orange, I would need to stretch some parts so that the gaps are filled in and I need to shrink other parts so that it can be projected onto a flat surface. But this will do for today. The most important thing here though is, can you see what's happened to our line? When it was a globe, this was a straight line. But as soon as you put this onto a flat surface, it becomes, an, it forms an arc. And this arc is, it, it forms a section of what is known as a great circle. So now we're getting there, Gene. I'll, I'll use, another, uh, use another orange and we'll mark some points on our orange and we'll draw, a, draw some, another, we'll draw some more lines. So here we've got, this is basically the same as the last time. So here we've got our two points and we've got a line between them. Now, watch what happens here. If I get the orange and I cut a, directly along the line, if I don't cut my fingers off, I'd make YouTube quite upset. So there, there's our line. You can still see, you can still make up, make out the line. Now, if you follow this line all the way around, that is the great circle. This is the longest straight line that you can actually draw onto this orange or onto a globe. So you, you could have gone the other way around, but as long as this circle has the same radius as the globe, then that is known as a great circle. Don't forget, it's the longest line. And what I've done is I've actually cut the orange or cut the globe into two equal sections. And that's very important. So remember that, Gene. If you cut it into two equal sections, a perfect globe, then the circle that's formed around the inside of the, uh, the segment, that is a great circle. If that's a great circle, the next question must be, what is a small circle? And I'm sorry to say, Gene, um, I'm trying to think how to put this <laughs> politely. 
It has nothing to do with stopping at some point on your great circle. That's just wrong. So, as always, let's keep this as simple as we can. So we'll just say that a small circle is just any circle on the surface of a globe which is, has a smaller radius than the globe. Now, that sounds a bit complex. <laughs> let's, let's simplify this. So I know what we'll do. We, we'll use another orange. I'm going through some oranges today. Um, hopefully it'll make it easier to visualize. Let's draw, let's say that I'm going on my globe from here to here. So in other words, on the globe, I'm actually walking from east to west. So I'm going from east to west. Now, if I cut the orange, let's draw a line between these two points so we uh, get it right. If I cut this orange along this point here, can you see what's happened, Gene? I've got two different size parts of an orange. So this circle here is smaller than the, imagine this, this globe here, there's, it, it's got a radius, there's, you know, that's the, the distance from the center to the, to the edge. But this one here, this has got a radius that is smaller than the orange. So this is a small circle. So a small circle is any circle which has a radius that is smaller than the globe itself. Hopefully, Gene, you uh, now understand the difference between a great circle and a small circle. And um, you, can, uh, <laughs> you can tell your walking group navigator. In fact, you can tell, explain it to your whole walking group and, uh, you know, over a cup of tea somewhere. Thanks for watching.